Okay, here we can see how the fornix is formed. So your um, basically this would be your fimbri. Well, this would be this gyrus over here is your parahippocampal gyrus within which the hippocampus sits. Now, your parahippocampal gyrus, one of its edges is known as the uncus, okay? And this would be your uncus. Um, it's not the edge, but it's kind of like where the parahippocampal gyrus would curve inwards. It's kind of like a protruding structure when you can look at the sagittal section of the brain. Now, within, so deep to the parahippocampal gyrus, you'll be able to find your hippocampus. Now, here's kind of like a visual demonstration of the hippocampus, and Imagine it like a seahorse, so that's the way to remember it because it is also it is associated with your memory function. Now, on top of your hippocampus, you are going to have a gray matter, uh, sorry, a white matter sheet. Now, it's white matter specifically because it is in fact made up of axons. And this white matter sheet that's covering the hippocampus is made up of axons, and these are axons of a specific type of neurons, which are known as your pyramidal neurons. So, and by the way, when these this white matter sheet, this white matter sheet is known as alveus, as I've discussed in the previous video, and this white matter sheet, the alveus, medially converges. So this medial convergence of the white matter sheet, all of this is axons, just think of it very simply, when it converges, it forms the fimbria, so the fimbria hippocampi. And here are your pyramidal neurons, which are for forming the alveus white matter sheet. Okay, and it immediately converges to form the fimbria. Okay, now here would be your right and left crura of your fornix. So your fornix actually kind of comes from your fimbria hippocampus. And the fimbria hippocampus comes from white, is a white matter sheet made of alveus. Here's your right and left crus, and they join to form the body of the fornix, and also you'll later form the commissure of the fornix. Um, what does this look like over here? Well, here you can see your hippocampus, and remember, where are we in the brain? We're in the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Always remember. The floor, so think of this entire structure forming a floor. And the floor of the hippocampus, uh, sorry, the floor of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle is made up of your hippocampus. Remember, what is your hippocampal formation? Your hippocampal formation would be your parahippocampal gyrus, which would have been over here. And then it would be your dentate gyrus, which would be um, here. This is your fimbria of hippocampus, and here's your actual hippocampus. Uh, yeah. And continuing on to show where exactly the fornix is formed, when the fimbria of hippocampus continues medially, that's where the right and left crura, the right and left legs, right and left crura of your fornix form. Remember, again, we are in the inferior horn of your lateral ventricle. And this then curves around and goes, your fornix goes on top of your thalamus, as we're going to see in, a, um, in another segment of this video. So your fornix is going on top of your thalamus, if you can see that here. Um, yeah, your body of fornix is over here. Okay. That explains how the fornix is formed. By the way, then after the body of fornix, when you come around your corpus callosum, the fornix kind of comes and splits into two columns. These are your anterior columns of fornix. Okay. Um, I think it skipped a video. Let's firstly talk about the parts of the fornix. So the fornix has a body that we just saw. It's known as corpus. It it's also 13 has hours. Legs. It also has legs, which are known as crura. And it's columns. So you know the columns we just saw, how the body of the fornix then splits at top on top of the corpus callosum? When it splits into these two anterior columns, your right and left anterior column, your column then has two parts. And you need to remember pars libera, and pars tecta. So here's your pars tecta, and here would be your pars libera, free part and tectal, I don't know, tectal part. Your pars tecta, and both of these have fibers. Remember, everything, not everything is just there for the sake of it. Everything's a fiber, everything's a pathway. So your pars tecta of your anterior um, columns are containing pre commissural fibers, whereas your, um, and it contains your pre commissural fibers as well as your retro commissural fibers. If you want, you can pause the video and look at where these pathways, where these fibers go to.
Okay. Um, yeah, and your tinea fornices is another structure, and it's the attachment of your fornix to the choroid plexus. Remember, basically on top of your lateral ventricle or within your lateral ventricle, you have your choroid plexus, and I'm going to show it here. So here actually would be your for, um, sorry, here would be your fornix. Um, here would be your fornix? Yeah, here would be your fornix. Here you can see your fornix. And of, of course, above your fornix, you have your corpus callosum here. Now, within the fornix, sorry, um, the part that's known as tinea fornices would be here. So it's actually between your choroid plexus. Here's your opening for choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle, the red structure, and between that would have been your tinea fornices. Um, another quick recap of where this all lies. Okay, yeah, in this video, I'm going to try and show you where the mammillary bodies are in association with the fornix. So here you have your hippocampus, and you have your medially converging wide matter sheet known as alveus and it forms a fimbria and we've already discussed this you have your right and left crura you have your body of fornix you have your columns and finally here are your mammillary bodies and your mammillary bodies are literally two structures here they are and they kind of hold the columns of the fornix together now don't quote me on that but that's kind of the way i remember them and they're on the tips of the fornix i have another video which demonstrates all of these where they are in spatial arrangement um, in terms of the definitions, the fornix is basically a white matter structure. It's all white matter because it's all made up of your alveus, isn't it? It's a continuation of your alveus. And it's leaving the hippocampus that projects mainly to the, um, to the mammillary bodies, okay? So your fornix is leaving the hippocampus but projecting to your mammillary bodies which are over here. And the mammillary bodies then turn and mainly project to the thalamus. Okay, this is also known as the mammillothalamic tract. Going from your mammillary body to the thalamus, this is known as your mammillothalamic tract. Here's a way better diagram. <laughs> I was trying to draw this, but yeah.